There has been a series of papers that have come out in the last year showing how following a fasting mimicking diet affected patients with advanced cancers and just last week, early stages of Alzheimer's. So in this video, we will go through what FMD's fasting mimicking diets are and what these latest studies tell us. Fasting mimicking diets, otherwise referred to as FMDs, are diets first coined by Professor Fulter Longo, which is very much suggested by the name mimics fasting while getting to eat food. Sounds kind of non-logical, but to cut a very long story short, there have been many studies showing that periodic fasting or dietary restriction approaches has many benefits for longevity, such as increasing the lifespan of mice and other model organisms, and a mice has been linked with metabolic changes of many health-related biomarkers, such as blood glucose and C-reactive protein levels. One of the reasons these fasting mimicking diets were devised was to mimic then this metabolic state achieved during prolonged fasting while having a diet that people can comply to and doesn't put them at risk of malnourishment. So what exactly does a fasting mimicking diet entail? Well, the diet is an intervention that a patient takes once a month for five days and consists of a low calorie, low protein diet but still provides all the micronutrients necessary to avoid malnutrition. So it includes items like plant-based soups, bars, crackers and olives. The medically designed fasting mimicking diet by Prolon, where Professor Longo advises, has set it up such that the first day is around 1,100 calories, dropping to around 750 calories for days 2 to 5. However, how can we trust this without any human clinical trial data? Well then, let's move on to that. In terms of landmark papers, fasting mimicking diets were tested in healthy human subjects and were shown to cause no loss or an increase in lean body mass and function and reduced risk biomarkers for ageing, diabetes, cancer and cardiovascular disease. Skeletal muscle was also shown to be retained in healthy physically active men who underwent three cycles of a fasting mimicking diet. In this recent study, they had 24 men, 12 following the fasting mimicking diet and 12 following a normal diet, and took measurements of force production before, after the first cycle, and roughly a week after the third cycle. While there was a significant decline in body mass for those taking the FMD, after the first cycle, force production, muscle volume did not change. So, at least in a small group of strength athletes, it seems feasible with no risk of muscle loss. But what about testing FMD in patients at risk of muscle loss, such as sarcopenia patients? And what about for other non-healthy patients with diabetes, cancer and cardiovascular disease? Well, while clinical studies have not been conducted for all of these diseases yet, data has been released within the last year on cancer and Alzheimer's disease, which we'll examine for the remainder of this video. So firstly, this paper... Exceptional tumour responses to fasting mimicking diets combined with standard anti-cancer therapies. So before we jump into this paper, it's important to clarify a few things here. Firstly, what is meant by exceptional tumour response? I would usually cringe at a paper if it said that their results were exceptional. So here they define exceptional tumour responses as patients achieving complete and long-lasting tumour remissions with cyclic fasting mimicking diet in combination with anti-cancer therapies. So this trial was a monocentric, open-label, single-arm prospective clinical trial, evaluating the safety, feasibility, metabolic and immunomodulatory effects of a cyclic FMD in patients with different cancer types, disease stages and receiving different types of standard anti-neoplastic treatments. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful, so to reiterate, it was a trial that was open label, so participants and doctors knew what they were doing, and single arm, meaning that all the patients were following the fasting and making diets, and then they were just followed over time to see how these different biomarkers changed. And to save some time, it is easiest for me just to show you the highlights, whereby in total they present results for five patients, all with advanced poor prognosis solid neoplasms. So one patient had extensive stage small cell lung cancer, one had metastatic pancreatic adenocarcinoma, 
one had metastatic colorectal cancer and two patients had metastatic triple negative breast cancer. And so in all these cases, they saw exceptional tumor responses as I defined earlier. And so it's kind of impossible to know if the fasting mimicking diet really added something here compared to standard anti-cancer therapies, since this is a small study with five patients actually presented here. And it's not like we have a control patient who has exactly the same tumor type and chemotherapy, but without the fasting mimicking diet. But that said, the impact of the fasting mimicking diet appeared consistent despite the different tumor types and included some tumors that are currently very challenging to treat, such as pancreatic cancer, late stage breast cancer and colorectal cancer. It would obviously also be nice to see whether the fasting mimicking diet alone is effective, but at this stage, the gold standard is to still use standard anti-cancer therapies. So as written, the results prompt the initiation of clinical trials to investigate cyclic fasting mimicking diets in combination with standard anti-tumor therapies in specific clinical contexts. And then the most recent publication we will finish with is involved with treating Alzheimer's disease, for which there is currently still no cure and in America is predicted to affect 13 million people by 2050. So this is the paper, Fasting Mimicking Diet Cycles Reduce Neuroinflammation to Attenuate Cognitive Decline in Alzheimer's Models. So this is the map of the paper, or well, it's more of an interconnected web of experiments that show exactly what the experimenters did. And by and large, the majority of this paper is conducted in a series of mouse experiments, where they had two different mouse models of Alzheimer's disease. And they showed that by having these mice follow the fasting mimicking diet, it showed a reduction in cognitive decline based on a series of different behavioural and memory tests, and also a reduction in Alzheimer's disease pathology. As you can see here, the decline in staining for amyloid beta in the mice following the fasting mimicking diet. And so given these promising effects on mouse models, they decided to test firstly just the safety and feasibility of fasting mimicking diet cycles on patients with amnestic mild cognitive impairment or early stage Alzheimer's disease. This trial, in comparison to the cancer one, is a randomised and placebo-controlled clinical study. And so they ended up with 12 following the fasting mimicking diet and 16 following the placebo. And in case you were wondering how you would actually do a placebo in these experiments, the placebo diet assigned to patients in the control arm consists of replacing lunch or dinner with a meal based on pasta or rice with vegetables for five days a month. And so on average, both groups did the cycles around six times, and dropouts were seen in both cases. But what was seen was that the patient with mild cognitive impairment following the fasting mimicking diet intervention, only mild symptoms were observed, including fatigue, headaches, hypertension, irritability and depression. But overall, these initial data suggest that a five-day fasting mimicking diet cycle administered once a month have been feasible and overall safe in a small group of patients with early Alzheimer's disease. But we are still awaiting cognitive assessments to see if these cycles actually slow down cognitive decline or whether they can reduce amyloid beta pathology in the patients. So diet is important for health. Health is the absence of disease. These studies then add to the conclusion that diet is important for disease, whether that be for prevention or as we have seen more in this video, potentially for treatment. Arguably, these studies are very small and selective, but fasting mimicking diet is a natural intervention that seems safe if followed correctly and will be something I'll continue to keep an eye on as more data comes out. In particular with the cancer study, it would be very interesting to understand what's happening maybe to the immune system and how this dieting response is influencing the biochemistry of what's going on. Is it linked to autophagy? Or how is these benefits being mediated? But with that, I hope you learned something in this video. If you want to catch an interview I did with Folter Longo last year, then click here. Otherwise, thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.